Hi everyone, welcome back to Eden. How are you all doing? I hope you are all doing great. So it's been good to see you again. So we have been discussing about verbs. So today we'll be discussing about the types of verbs, few of the verbs in fact. Like before we further proceed with the class, please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so today's concept is like I told you verbs are very important. So to understand this particular topic of verbs is like very important in order to speak well. So those who wants to learn English to speak it in a fluent way, they need to know certain things like how to use the verbs and all. So when they know how to use them in a sentence, that itself makes them how to frame the sentence properly. When they are able to frame the sentence properly, then you will not find it difficult to talk even. Okay. So, so we have seen the different types of verbs in a chart format. So today I am taking out main verbs which are a part of finite verbs. We have seen the verbs are mainly classified as finite and non-finite. So under finite verbs, you will be coming across the helping verbs and the main verbs. So we will be discussing about the main verbs today. So what are main verbs? Okay, what is this main verb? So main verb as it is, as the name itself suggests, it is very important. It is the main verb or it is uh, related to the action. What is verb? Verb is nothing an action word. Verb is nothing but an action word. So it will be stating about action. So this main verb also states about action. Okay. So this main verbs again we have seen they have been classified based on the object, based on the past form and also based on the state like whether they are dynamic or stative or whether they are transitive or intransitive and whether they are regular or irregular. Today we will be seeing or discussing about this particular main verbs. So like we have said the main verbs are the name we even call them as lexical verbs or they are even called as principal verbs. Okay. So main verbs are nothing but they will be denoting about action. They will be easily identified in a sentence. So if at all if there is a main wave verb in the sentence, we can directly identify it based on its action. Okay. So by just looking at it, we can identify the main verb. And moreover, main verbs can stand alone. That means they can just stand on their own. In the sense, they can be alone. They don't need any supporting verbs. Right. So if I take an example, I helped Sam. Okay. I helped Sam. Here you can see. Here we can see that what is the verb the action being done here is helping. Okay. Helped. Who is helping? I. The subject is helping the object that is Sam. Okay. So this is nothing but it is directly identified it is action being done. So here this is the main verb. Okay, so they can stand alone means here you can't see any verbs, other verbs which are helping, which are doing the purpose, which are solving the purpose, right? So main verbs are nothing but they are the actions which are being performed. So here the main verbs are classified based on the object we have said. The first category is based on object. This object we know, object of a sentence, object in a sentence is nothing but it is either a noun or a pronoun. This is the object. So based on object they are classified as transitive and intransitive. What is this? Transitive. Transitive means transfer. Okay. Transfer. What is it transferring? It is transferring the action to the sub object. Means there will be an object on which it will be dependent. You can ask a question. You can ask a question like whom and what. Okay. To the subject you will be asking question like whom or what to know the main verb. To know the main verb that is the transitive verb. Okay. The transitive verb see in the previous sentence I have said. I helped Sam. Okay. I helped Sam. 
So you can identify that there is whom did I help? I helped whom? Sam. So this is the object. So it is transferring the action. I helped Sam. So this is the main verb. Here it is the transitive verb. This is the transitive verb. Suppose, suppose if, if there is no object, if it is not transferring anything to the object, the, just the opposite of transitive verb will be intransitive verb. Opposite of transitive will become nothing but intransitive verbs. There you won't be finding any object like, instead of saying I helped Sam, if I say I helped, I helped. There is still a verb. There is a subject. But you can't see an object related to it. I helped. They jumped. Okay. I helped. They jumped. He swam. So all these words, all these words you can find verbs. So these are intransitive verbs. These are nothing but intransitive verbs. So what is intransitive and transitive? Main verbs are nothing but they will be discussing about the action verbs. They will be discussing about action, the activity being performed. So transitive verbs, they transfer, means here we will be asking a question to the subject, whom or what to identify whether there is a object to which the action, the word is being, the verb is being performed on it. Okay, so and when there is no subject, when there is no object present in the sentence, then it is free from the other case. The opposite of transitive is nothing but intransitive. Like, I helped. They jumped. We don't know. We don't know what are they doing. They are jumping. But from where did they jump? They jumped on whom? Or they jumped on what? There is nothing, no information about all that. Or... Simply you can say, they threw, they threw, if I said they threw a ball, if I am saying they threw a ball, what is the action being performed? Throwing, okay, they threw a ball. Here in this particular example which I am telling now, they threw a ball. So what, what did they throw? They threw a ball. So a ball is the object. So here this verb is becoming the main verb which is there, it is acting as a transitive verb. If I say they threw, they threw, I am not mentioning about any object. So here again the same verb, both are through only. Depending upon the usage, depending upon how it is being used in the sentence, it will be classified whether it is transitive or intransitive. So the same word through is transitive in one case when it is defining the object and it is intransitive when there is no object present in the sentence. So, they simply threw, they threw, that is the threw will become intransitive verb and they threw a ball, there it will become a transitive verb. So, these two are main verb based on the object. The next one is, based on So, second case is based on action. So, they can be dynamic or stative. They can be dynamic or stative. So, what, what is meant by dynamic? What is meant by dynamic? When I am saying dynamic, it is an action which is being performed. The physical activities like which we say, now I am talking, okay, which can be, which can be changed based on the forms, okay. They change based on the forms of the tense or the time. So, they can be used even in past, present or future. So, they will be changed. So, that is dynamic, the action being changed. So, it is dependent on time you can say, like I am talking now present. I spoke. Okay. I spoke. I am teaching. I taught. But here the word which is there, that verb which is there, it is dynamic in nature. So, all these are actions only. But if I am saying, I love someone. 
If I say I love someone, I hate someone, okay, or I like you, I like this cat. When I'm saying this words like like, love, hate, okay, recognize, feel, seem, all these words, they won't be seen physically, okay, they won't be changing. So, those words, we call them as stative, okay. When those verbs are being used, those words are being used in the sentence, then they are called as stative verbs. And the other ones which I am saying, the action verbs are called as dynamic. Like, dynamic verbs are go, talk, walk, write, speak, etc. All these words which are there. They are all dynamic. But what are stative? Like love, like, hate, okay, recognize, feel, seem. So many words like this which can just, just see, hear. All these words when they are used in sentences. I see, mind you, if I am saying mind, mind your tongue. Okay, when I am saying mind your tongue, that mind is not indicating the mind, but to have a control. Okay, so that mind is also, that mind word which we use, that is also a verb, which is stative verb. Right, so you understood the difference between dynamic and stative verbs. So this is also a kind of, Main verbs. These are also types of main verbs. Next, these are very important based on past form. That is regular or irregular. Okay, based on the past form, they are categorized as regular verbs and irregular verbs. What is this past form? So, we know in time, when we are talking about time, so we will be discussing about tenses and all in the forthcoming classes. But like when we are talking about time, what is happening now is present. What already happened is past. So, based on the past forms, in past, you will be having past simple and past participle. We will be discussing that in detail in the forthcoming videos. But just for understanding purpose, I am saying that past form, that is the past simple. When we are telling about some action in past simple and in past participle, the verb forms will change. How they are being changed, based on how they are being changed, they are categorized as regular and irregular. Generally, when we take about or like most of the verbs which we talk are all regular. Mostly they are regular. What are these regular verbs? They are nothing but whatever the verb which is there, that is the base form of the verb, that is the root verb. Root verb means the word which is actually telling about action. Suppose if I am saying uh, talk, okay, talk, talk is the root word. Talking, talked, all these are different forms of verbs again, right? So, when I am saying talk, that is the root verb. So, how does root verb talk change when it goes into the past? So, when I am using it in the past, talked, talked, okay? So, there are some words which will just change the form from present to past by just adding an ed at the end. By adding ed at the end. So, when we are adding ed at the end, when the word is changing, then we call them as regular verbs. Suppose the word is already ending with an e. Suppose the word is already ending with an e. You simply add a d. Or suppose if the word is ending with a consonant y, you will be changing that into i and add ed. So, this type of thing, exceptions we have already seen in many cases. So, when the word is changing to its past form, suppose, marry. Okay, 
So marry, it's changing it into its past form by changing the Y to I and add ED. Here what is happening? We are simply adding this. So it became married. Married. Are you married? We'll ask someone, are you married? Okay. So are you married means, are you married in the past? Okay. Did you get? Did you get? Married. Okay. So that is what we are trying to talk about. So this is the past form. So in the past form, the past form is formed by adding simply ed or ied. So this type of verbs we call them as regular verbs and most of the verbs are regular in nature. And what is this irregular? What are these irregular verbs? There are around 200 words on a whole which are irregular in nature. Irregular means they are not regular. They don't follow the, follow the regular rules of transforming themselves into a verb. Okay, in the past form. So therefore, they are called irregular verbs. So these two are very important. So we will be seeing in detail about regular verbs and irregular verbs with, by taking some examples and transforming them. And regarding the irregular verbs, how they are changing. There are four cases based on which they are generally categorized and they can be remembered easily. So we will try to see that in the next class. So these two things like I hope like you have understood what are main verbs in simple. Main verbs are based on object, based on the past form and based on the action. So they have been categorized and this is how they have been explained. So we will see with some examples in the next class. Thank you.